Hey, Tom. Hey, JC. Tom, we did good enough the first time we get to come back. Well, nobody told us not to. It's the internet. <laughs> we go where <laughs> They'll we... immediately tell you not to. Yeah. Hey, but uh, we had a lot of down... way more downloads and listens than I thought we would. So thank you to everyone. Uh, you're listening to the Cheaters Never Fin podcast. I'm JC, and that's Tom. That's me. Yeah, so thank you for your support of us rambling yeah, on about wrestling yeah because i think when i do it it only counts as one even if i try to do it repeatedly so apparently there are other people that did it so and whether you did it purely out of pity or because you're actually interested in what we have to say we thank you either way or if you just accidentally ended up here looking for cheaters never win uh, also hi welcome this is wrestling not hockey please go to the second door on your left which is hockey with occasional wrestling. Right. This is the this is this here's the fun podcast though. We got a lot to talk about this week, Tom. We had a pay per view. We did. They, they still they still call them pay per views, right? Yeah, because even though I, they're all network. Well, they're still technically available on pay per view. If you want to pay like ten times as much, right? Uh, yeah. So we got to talk about the Royal Rumble. Uh, we are on the road to WrestleMania, which is exciting. Uh, we also have to talk about the fact Seth Rollins is hurt again. This is not a clip from uh, 2015. No, uh, Seth, Seth's hurt. Uh, we'll lead off with that. We'll talk about the Rumble. Uh, and then we're going to day de- de- well, what? Damn it, I can't talk today. I'm so excited, Tom. Uh, we're debuting a, a new segment called The Ten Count. Uh, ten things you may have missed this week in professional wrestling. I missed most of them, personally. <laughs> I, I cheated. I looked ahead. Yes. Um, also, uh, for future reference, for those of you that want to send us your comments about what you think about the week in professional wrestling, even as the week's happening, because we can go back to it. Uh, your thoughts are always welcome uh, at Cheaters Never Pen, Cheaters NVR Pen on the Twitter. Uh, and if you want to write us something we want to read on the show, use hashtag Smark Out. We'll take anything, but as of right now, I think we sent out that call maybe 10, 15 minutes before we're recording this, so, yes. you know. So that may be a segment tonight. Who knows? Probably not. If not, I'll think of something. Depends uh, on how long we ramble. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, follow us on Twitter at Cheaters Never Pin, Cheaters NVR Pin. Uh, you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, uh, Google Play, and uh, on Spreaker as well if you just want to stream us there. Uh, we're also on Facebook at cheaters never pin you can find us there we had a lot of we had a couple great polls this week on the facebook page thank you to everyone who participated in those so many thumbs and hearts so many thumbs and those are fun we're gonna keep doing uh, those from time to time they are we we get people from all kinds of different countries it seems i don't i don't know how it's getting to those people but they're they're thumbing and hearting to their heart's content it's because the internet's magic tom it is you know it's, it's not a bunch magic of tubes what Seth Rollins knee no it whatever the opposite of magic is yeah oh so for those of you who may be unaware and living under a rock for the last uh, 48 hours Seth Rollins uh re-injured the same knee where he had uh, basically almost a complete reconstruction last or September 2015 Sep- no it wasn't September it was near Survivor Series it would have been October November 2015 uh hurt it, it during the debut ago. yeah hurt during the debut of Samoa Joe uh you can seek out the the gif on the internet uh looks like Joe had the Kohina clutch locked in uh went to take him down Seth took a, a nasty bump where his knee tweaked in a way his knee is not supposed to bend uh Seth is currently uh in Alabama for evaluation uh hopefully it's nothing too serious but damn the dude can't catch a break there, there's a thing too. Uh, it's popped up on Reddit and uh, those type of things where <clears throat> you can hear almost in the audio when Joe's got him in the clutch. You can't really hear Joe say something. Joe says something to him and like, you know, or is it bad or something along those lines? And um, Rollins comes back with like, I hope not, or yeah, you just. It's it's just one of those like super sad realistic things, and you're just like, oh crap, this is real. This isn't the this isn't the angle. Because when when news first came out, it was like, oh no, it's real. Then you're like, wait a second, I'm a wrestling fan. No, no, nothing's real. Nothing's ever real. 
So you kind of play it off and then you look and then you start to see things. And Joe's doing the thing that he's supposed to do on like Twitter and that type of thing. He's actually staying in character, talking, you know, to Triple H going, you know, I did my job, that type of thing. But I mean, it is a legitimate injury. Obviously, they're not trying to do it on purpose. And it, it sucks for Rollins. It's a, as a guy who has minor knee issues, nothing like what he's gone through, but I know how bad it sucks. And to have him go through that. And I mean, I've been, since he's come back, I've watched a lot of the things that he's done. He does a lot of high, high impact moves where like he braces his knees and things like that. I mean, most wrestlers do in general, but he does a lot of flips and things like that, where you see the brace of the knee and you're just like, if that plants wrong or that that's the type of thing that he ended up blowing out his knee in the first place. And you're going to be watching that all the time now where, you know, it could be, it could be any move like any uh, with knee injuries like that it could be the most minor thing. I had mine where I just planted my foot trying to get a foul ball between like catcher and first base where I just like planted my foot. It wasn't like a huge move. I wasn't like trying to dive or anything like that. I was just running and I stopped and I tore all the cartilage in my knee. So it's just one of those things that happens and it's unfortunate. And Joe's going to get a little stigma around him, even though he doesn't deserve one. Yeah. It's really heartbreaking for Seth, especially knowing he missed WrestleMania last year while holding the title. He was taking that belt to mania. I think we can, we all know. Yeah. Uh, and to see everything he was thinking and feeling, especially if you go back and watch the WWE 24 special they did on him after his return, uh, Damn, it's, it's so sad to see him in that state. And I think yeah, all indication at this point is that it's not nearly as severe as it was last time, which is good. Um, the reports I was seeing from the Wrestling Observer and all were saying, you know, it may be eight weeks out, so he should be back in time for Mania so they can kind of proceed uh, with whatever they have planned, which is also good for us, good for Seth. Uh but just to see him struggle with this again. And he's a guy that you could tell is so determined to be the top guy all the time. Uh, and to have another setback is just, it's incredibly unfortunate and disheartening. He's a guy who stays in incredible shape. I mean, they call him CrossFit Jesus for a reason. And one of the things that I was seeing online too, is that unfortunately with CrossFit, you do tend to see injuries like this. So, I don't know. I don't think it's necessarily going to have him cut back on the way he trains, but it, it's just one. It, it might, you know, coming down the line, if it's something that, I mean, doctors are going to have to start looking at this and go, look, this, you know, if, if the way you're training is causing this kind of damage, then maybe we need to change your approach somewhat mm -hmm. or do something like that. I don't know. I'm not personal trainer by any means if you've seen me you know that i am not so but it's it's an unfortunate situation and yeah you know, i wish seth the best going through uh, eight weeks i think is a conservative estimate um especially if they're talking torn mcl which is what i saw recently but at this point I, nothing's beneficially announced i don't know we got to play it by ear and just keep our fingers crossed for WrestleMania. I think that the longer we don't hear anything is a good thing. Cause if it was major, they'd be like, uh, he's done for a while. Yeah. So hopefully it's, hopefully it's good news coming out of Alabama. Um, he's been tweeting and everything about it too. So, he, you know, again, he's been through this very recently, so I don't think he's any worse for the wear, even though mentally I know something like this would really get to him. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's happening, and hopefully he'll be back in time for Mania. But if he doesn't make it back, well, he's not facing Triple H. So, what does that do to the Mania card? I I think it just wipes that match off the card completely. I don't think you have some kind of replacement or anything like that. It's not like Triple H was a regular active member of the roster that needed a match triple h doesn't need a match it was just an attraction pretty much to get people in there um so i don't think 
I've heard people just throw random crap out there about like bringing in a superstar as a one shot deal or something. I heard uh, punk being mentioned, which is <laughs> come on that that is the exact reaction you should have to someone who brings that up because <laughs> ain't not gonna happen. Nope. Owen Hart's coming back quicker than that. Yep. Um. Real question but, there is who goes in the Hall of Fame first? Uh, <sighs> but yeah, they they'll just they'll push that back. If anything, um, I mean they won't have it at a you know one of the subprime pay per views. They'll push that Rollins Triple H match to SummerSlam, and then yeah. they'll they'll work something out. But it's not like. Rollins is going to show up on crutches and call in like Ambrose or something like that to do the job. It's it's they they'll keep it off. Yeah, that's, and just build it again. That's what I hope they do. Because now I you've mean, got now you now he's got to go through you know mini boss Joe to get to Triple H. Yes, which is even more entertaining in my opinion. And then I, I know you'd brought this up earlier, but the stigma this may put on Joe, especially after you know. He's been on the main roster twice, and he's injured two people now. Oh, no. Yeah. But then you look at somebody like Seth, who the, the common belief, especially in the the eyes of bitter-ass Bret Hart, is that Seth is reckless as hell and injures everybody, too. So, I, I take that with a grain of salt. And you watch that video, I mean, it was just awkward. Like, there was, it's not like there's malice involved or anything. No, so. I mean... And I mean, realistically, if you want to go back further to Joe and Tyson Kidd, I mean, that was a fluke thing to begin with. Yeah. That yeah. could have been extremely tragic, but I mean, they're... the one percent of the one percent to survive and walk. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, let's move on from Seth Rollins because now again, now you that we're can... depressed all as hell, right? Because, like you said, we could sit here. People are out there fantasy booking every scenario, and none of it makes sense. And I think we may have we'll have a clearer idea Monday when Raw rolls back around. Yeah. So I'm not even worried about it until we have something definitive. Because I hate fantasy booking stuff. No, that, that's not something that we do here on Cheaters Never Pin. No, no, never. But what we do, what we do, talk about and what we do discuss uh, is the Royal Rumble. That was a thing that happened, definitely. Overall, uh, on a scale of one to ten, how how did you feel about the Royal Rumble? The entire show, not I'm sorry. The, <laughs> let's let's use WWE terminology. The Royal Rumble event, not the Royal Rumble match, on a scale of one to ten. I, I'd push it eight and a half at this point. It was a strong card. Uh, I enjoyed the matches that were there. I mean, it had. <laughs> The Rumble, and we'll, we'll get to the specifics of it, but I mean, it had two really strong matches and a few other. Yeah. You know, there, there wasn't really a true stinker of the bunch when it came to at least the the seven to eleven portion of the. There was one. We'll get to it. Okay. But I mean, I enjoyed it as a whole. And uh, again, we'll pick it apart later, but I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, I, I was hedging on eight. So I yeah, it was a good show. I, the pace of the show was pretty good, I thought, too. Uh, but he, hey, if you're going to start an hour early, uh, go all the way to 11. Don't just end at 1030. Like, what the hell? <laughs> like, <laughs> Well, one of my one of my favorite things was the fact that like. They push the fact that like pre-show starts at five, but we'll have Jerry the King Lawler and Shawn Michaels, and at like six fifty-five, here's Shawn Michaels. Well, Shawn Michaels was on the panel. That's what they were pushing him for. He was. I didn't notice yeah. him on the panel. I, none, none of us were paying attention there. Okay. I think everybody was up and down for food at the, at the worldwide section three twenty-eight headquarters. But uh, I guess we'll start we'll start with the Rumble match itself because that's that's the main attraction. That's okay. What... <sighs> All right. We look forward to this match every. I look forward to this match every year. 
because it's it's the one time a year there's actually stakes to something. It's the one time of year something actually matters. <laughs> 